Hello, hello, hello. This is Mr. Folly, and welcome to podcast Big Idea 1.3 to 1.4. We're going to talk a little bit about percent composition, percent part over total. I got it. Empirical formulas. Hey, why is it H2O and not H1.5 O3.814? And molecular formulas where you have C6 H12O6 exactly instead of reducing it to C2. Whoops, to C H2O. That didn't make sense to you? Hey, that's why we're watching the podcast. Oh, so exciting, so exciting. Um, percent composition. So what you do is you find the percent by mass, drop a little Benny King there. Percent composition is percent by mass of each element in a compound. So I better get my calculator and my periodic table ready. Uh-oh, my periodic table is not handy. I might have to run and get it. What is the percent nitrogen in ammonia, and ammonia is NH3? So what I'm going to do here, remember, percent is always, always, always part over total times 100%. Right, so my part that's n, so basically it's n over NH3, right, times 100%. Now, this is in mass, so I'm just gonna do um, go to the periodic table. Nitrogen is 14.01 over, yes, I include nitrogen, except for I put the letter n instead of 14.01, um, and then this right here is gonna be 14.01 plus 3.03 which is going to be 17.04 times 100. So I would get on, on, on 14.01 divided by 17.04, and that is 82.2% N. That's it. So it's just part over total. No other tricks that can be, come from that. I mean, maybe you can say um, I have 5 grams um, of NH3 is how many grams of N, how many grams of N. And now that I know that this is 82.2%, I know that 80.822, 82.2% of five is N. So I was taught in my little hillbilly school that percentage, right? I put my percentage in decimal form. And then of means times, right? 82.2% of 5, that means times 5, is, is equals nitrogen. So then if I did that, I would do 0.822 times 5, and that would give me 4.11 grams of N. All right. Percent composition can be a mixture too. So the mass of each part over the mass of the entire mixture. So I guess instead of each, I should say mass of one part and that will give you the percentage of that part, okay? During distillation, 25.57 grams of methanol. Now, this is the molar mass of methanol. They'll give us the molar mass of pretty much anything afterwards. Was recovered as a gas, while 95.5 grams of a pure liquid never boiled. What is the percent composition of the mixture? So we, what we have is we have methanol, and we have um, pure other, pure something. Okay, Pure X. Hey, isn't Pure X like a hand sanitizer? I think it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the mass of one part. So I'm using this equation. Mass of one part, 25.57, over the mass of both mixtures. So that's going to be 25.57 plus 95.5 times 100%. So 25.57 divided by quantity, 25.57 plus 95.5, close quant parentheses. And that is 21.1%. This looks shady. It's like 9.555, so I'm going to rewrite it to be clear. All right. So it's 21.1% methanol, and that means that um, 100 minus 21.1 is 78.9% pure X, right? And we called our liquid pure X. That's all. Empirical formulas. This is the simplest formula for a compound. So that means the subscripts are all relatively prime. 
I want to say reduce, and that's probably what you would say to your friends, but relatively prime means they're as reduced as they can. So how do you do it? To find the empirical formula from data. So you're going to be given like seven grams of nitrogen, three grams of hydrogen, 14 grams of carbon, and then you're going to convert those, whether it's masses to moles, or if it's percentages, um, if it's percent, you assume it's 100 grams. So if it's 100 grams, then you just turn it into grams to moles. So you're going to do that. You convert it to moles, and then you're going to get like some fractiony weird number. You're going to reduce this number by dividing by the smallest answer. You're going to multiply to get a whole number. So this, it'll make a little more sense in, in a bit. But the fractions you need to know, you need to know the decimal form of, not that stabby knife thing, the decimal form of 0.33 equals one third, so roughly 0.33 equals one third. You need to know 0.5 is a half. Um, you need to know 0.25 is approximately, you know, if I have a, around 0.25, that's going to be a fourth, which means that, um, which means that you're going to multiply it by four. So if I have something that's 0.33 or 0.66, that means when I talk about multiplying it, whoa, I'm talking about multiplying it. 0.33 or 0.66, you're going to multiply it by 3. 0.5-ish, you're going to multiply it by 2. And 0.25 or 0.75, you're going to multiply it by 4. So rather than saying they're fourths, I think it's easier to just say I'm going to multiply it by 4. Okay? Okay. The answer for 3 is a subscript for the formula. This makes no sense. Let's do some so we'll make it make sense. What is the empirical formula for a compound that is 24.3% carbon, 4.1% hydrogen, and the remainder chlorine? So um, 100 minus 24.3 minus 4.1 is 71.6% chlorine. Okay. Now, these are percentages. I can assume I have any amount, and that ratio will be the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to convert it and say I'm going to have 100 grams. So I'm going to say I have 24.3 grams of carbon. I'm going to say I have 4.1 grams of hydrogen. And I'm going to say I have 71.6 grams of chlorine. Now, remember, the first thing I have to do is convert them each to moles. So I'm going to turn this into one mole of carbon. And then I hate you grams of carbon. I go to the periodic table, 12.01 grams of carbon. Ah, the bloody knife is back. And then here I have 1.01 grams of hydrogen and one mole of hydrogen. Ah, the bloody knife is back. I wish I knew how I could make that stop or what it really is. And then chlorine is 35.45 grams of chlorine and one mole of chlorine. And then calculators assemble 24.3 divided by 12.01 is 2.0233. I'm going to throw a lot of decimal places in here because I'm estimating to some extent. One divided by, that's not what I have. 4.1 divided by 1.01. 4.1 divided by 1.01 is 4.05941. 71.6 divided by 35.45 is 2.019746. And I just went like as far as my little brain can handle it. Now, if I'm a moron, and I'm not, but if I was a moron, I'd think carbon is 2.02, .02, hydrogen is 4.06, and chlorine is 2.02. .02. But I'm not a moron. So this is actually pretty close to being whole numbers. But what you always do is you divide by the smallest one divided by 2.019, divided by 2.019, divided by 2.019. This I know is 1. 2.0233 divided by 2.019 should be, it's 1.002. So I'm happy with that being 1. 4.0594 divided by 2.019 is 2.01. 2.01 is 2. Okay. So my formula is going to be, see how this is carbon, C1H2. 
2, CL1. And you, of course, wouldn't show the ones because that's just bad, bad form. Okay. So you get that. All right, let's do another. Ah, okay. Now, actually, we're not going to do another. So let's pretend now. Let's pretend. Ooh, I can change my color to let's pretend land. We'll go to green on the wonderful world of pretend land. Let's pretend that this was 1.5, and this was 2, and this was 1. 1 1.5 is not a whole number. So if that happens, what happens is I'm going to have to multiply every bitty one of them by 2. So that means in let's pretend land, I would have C3, H4, Cl2. Okay. If, 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 if I got one of those decimals that I could recognize, like a, a half or a fourth or a third. Molecular formula! The exact formula of a molecule giving the types of atoms and the number of each type. So, for example, if I do this, notice how what I had here, this is a reduced formula. Okay? So the molecular formula for this could be C2H4Cl2. That's a possibility. Ah, the bloody knife! I guess it's green, so it's not bloody. Or it could be times 5, C5H10Cl5 but it would be in this reduced ratio. But the exact formula, the molecular formula, would be one of the bigger ones. It's only one, I mean, it's exactly one of them, but we have to figure out what they are. The exact formula of a molecule, given the types of atoms and the number of each type. To find the molecular formula, one, find the empirical formula, so we have those other steps. Then you're gonna take the molecular mass divided by the empirical mass. Huh, huh, huh? Let's take a look. If the empirical formula found before had a molecular mass of 199, what is the molecular formula? So I remember we had CH2Cl. Ah, the green knife of death. CH2Cl. Okay. CH2Cl, when I go to the periodic table, is 12.01 plus 2.02 plus 35.45. So I'm going to the periodic table, I'm getting these, right? 12.01 plus 2.02 plus 35.45. And this is 49.48. This is my empirical mass. So I want to know how many 49.48s will fit into 199, right? This is my molecular mass. So I want to figure out how many of these fit inside of there. So I'm going to divide this by 49.48. Or I'm just going to erase those numbers once I have it. 49.48. 199 divided by second answer equals 4. All right. So what that means is my new, and that's not new, my actual molecular formula is C4H8Cl4. I multiply it times 4. See how my subscripts will change. Okay. So knowing the exact formula is very helpful, but um, knowing the empirical formula tells you what ratio of raw materials you need. And then this right here will help um, chemical engineers and organic chemists figure out how to make that. So if this was something that, I don't know, cleared up your sinuses or something, you want to know how to make it and you need to know the exact formula for that. Review. Always go through moles. Hey, we did that for empirical. Oh, we did that for molecular. Oh, we actually didn't do it for percentage, but that's okay. Empirical formula are moles. Ding. Molecular formulas are moles. Ding. We're going to find the formula of a hydrate. That's the lab. We get to do a lab. We get to light things on fire. I can't wait. And I'll say toodles, but I can't find my little thing that says stop the recording. I hope it's recording. It's done recording.